Good morning Year 5, it is day 35, Friday again, um, not as nice out there today, uh, but never mind, a um, bit of a cooler day. Uh, we are part way through a chapter, um, so I'll get started. Um, oh yeah, the um, TV people are there aren't they? Right, said Tasman, checking her notes, I'm going to start with a brief hello to Ramesh in the studio and then I'll turn to you guys and we can have a chat, it's all very relaxed, nothing to worry about. Can we keep the TV on? said Dad. It's nice to see what's going on in the studio. The sport news had moved on to rugby now and they were showing a clip of Wales scoring a try. Tasman thought about it for a moment. OK, but we'll need to keep it muted. And please, please don't stare at it when we're doing the interview. She flicked through her notes. When I talk to Ramesh, I can hear what he's saying through my earpiece, but you won't be able to, OK? She flashed her teeth at us and stared at her notes again. I noticed Mum was gripping onto Mabel. She looked utterly terrified. Tasman pressed the earpiece into her ear. They are going to recap the news headlines and then it's us. Get ready, team. As our, on our TV, I could see a different presenter at a desk reading the headlines. The news went by in a flash and before we knew it, we were live to the whole country. I glanced at our TV again and saw Rummish, the presenter with us, sitting on our sofa on a big screen behind him. I quickly looked at Tasman. She was staring right down the lens of the camera. Yes, hi Ramesh, I'm here this evening with the Miller family. They had rather an exciting evening on Saturday at our prestigious art gallery in London. Carl, would you like to tell me what happened? She pointed the black microphone towards my face. My instinct was to hold it, but she moved it out of my reach. I, I sold a painting, I said. I glanced at the TV behind her and saw that the whole country was now seeing the four of us in close up. It was surreal. Tasman turned the camera and laughed. But this wasn't just any painting, Ramesh. This was a painting discovered by one of the most iconic artists our country has ever known. Marika laughed. Would you like to tell us how much the painting went for, Cole? I looked beyond the microphone and saw a photograph of Mabel's painting on the screen. I swallowed. It sold for £100,000. That's a remarkable sum of money, isn't it? She said, for any artist, but especially one of your age. I nodded. She hovered the microphone in front of me for a while, but I couldn't get any more words out. So, Jenny, she said, moving on to Mum. How does it feel to have a, such a talented son? It's been very exciting, said Mum quietly. Tasman moved the microphone a little closer, but it'll always be just cold to us. Tasman grinned. Our car will be the most with the most expensive footwear, laughed Dad. Tamsin laughed too. I see, so you've already been spending some of the money, have you, Cole? What else are you planning to buy? I opened my mouth, but nothing came out. Dad leant forward. We've had quite a few tough years financially. Cole has kindly agreed that we should spend some of the money on the essentials for the home, as well as the trainers, of course. Yes, I understand you've been out of work for a while now, Mr Miller. You're a music roadie, is that right? I swallowed. Why was everyone so interested about Dad not having a job? I was. For all the big bands, I'm now full-time father, he said, although I am looking for work that fits around the children. You know what childcare costs can be like. Tasman grinned at him, looking a bit blank. I was starting to feel really uncomfortable, when Mabel suddenly sat up from Mum's lap. She pointed her hand towards our TV. Look, she shouted. On our TV was what everybody around the country was seeing, a photograph of Catch on the wall in the gallery. Tasman laughed. I think the viewers at home can now see Cole's painting that sold for the incredible sum of £100,000, said Tasman. My painting! Mabel said at the top of her voice. The TV cut back to us on the sofa. Ah, oh, that's so sweet, said Tasman, turning to my little sister. Did you want to keep Cole's painting for yourself, Mabel? No, said Mabel, shaking her head. That's Mabel's painting. Cole and Mabel did painting. I got my hands all messy. She wiggled her fingers toward Tasman. Not this again, Mabel, said Mum. That's Cole's picture. We went to the auction where it sold for lots of money, remember? Mabel shook her head. It's Mabel's, she said at the top of her lungs. Mabel did dot, dot, dot with her fingers and her hand went splodge. Mabel looked at me and grinned. I scowled back and then Cole hid Mabel's painting under his bed, she said, wriggling on Mum's lap. She pulled the microphone really close to her lips. Shh, she said, into the black phone like, it's a secret. I froze and stared down at my knees as Mabel squirmed in Mum's arms. Cole, whispered Dad on my other side, what's going on? I didn't look at anyone. If I stayed completely still and didn't make eye contact, then perhaps Tasman would move the conversation on. My heart sank as she pressed her ear, listening to something through her earpiece. Yes, Ramesh, this does not appear, appear to be a very interesting development happening live here in the Miller household, said Tans, Tasman, her eyes twinkling. The TV scene had changed back to the painting catch, but this time they zoomed in on the little dots that made up the butterflies around the oblong shapes, the ones made by Babel's tiny fingers. I believe the viewers at home can now see a close-up of your painting, Cole, and yes, I can see that those little dots appear to be made by some particularly small fingertips, possibly one smaller than your own. The camera moved around and then focused on the tiny portion of handprint that Mabel accidentally put in one corner. And I think, yes, we can see. Yes, we can see a red ha a handprint right there. An incredibly small handprint, like a toddler's. 
Mabel clapped as she saw the close-up on our TV. Mabel's hand, she squealed. Mabel's hand went splodge and I got all messy. That's Mabel's painting. I knew ev everyone was staring at me, waiting for me to say something, but I stayed silent. Cole, Mr and Mrs Miller, I'm sure your audience at home would be very interested to hear your comments about this. The black microphone pointed at Mum and then at Dad. Both of them had their jaws dangling open. In my head it felt like our house was collapsing around us, a scene of absolute devastation. The walls slowly crumbled as a cloud of dust and debris circled the lounge. All that was remaining was a TV camera, a reporter and a family of four squashed together on a scruffy sofa. I stared at the microphone and then I glanced up at Tasmin. She looked utterly delighted. Come on, Carl, she said. Those tiny fingerprints and that handprint weren't made by you, were they? In fact, it looks like this painting isn't yours at all, is it? I stared towards the ground and focused on a thinning patch of carpet. Maybe if I just kept silent, they'd give up and cut back to the studio. I waited, but the microphone had stayed exactly where it was. Carl, whispered Mum, what's going on? And then Tasmin asked me a question, a question that was about to change everything. Carl Miller, the world is waiting. Who actually is the artist behind Catch, the painting, and that has just sold for £100,000? I took a deep breath and gulped. I couldn't think of a single thing to say that would get me out of this. The game was up. My sister, I whispered. I did not expect anyone to find out that it was the painting. I thought they'd just end happily ever after. Chapter 29. The news is out. Everything that happened next was a blur. Tasmin listened to someone in her earpiece and then she turned to the camera. And that's where we'll have to leave it now. But as you can see, there are very big developments here in the Miller household. Back to Ramesh in the studio. The camera went off and the microphone went down. The cameraman and sound woman immediately began to pack up their things. Tasman crossed her arms. Well, it looks like you've got a lot of explaining to do, doesn't it? She said. We'll leave you to it. Mum turned to me as Mabel wriggled off her lap. My little sister headed to the hallway and I could hear her padding upstairs. Carl, what did you mean? Why would you say that Mabel did the painting? It was yours. Mum's voice was shaking and she was blinking really quickly. I didn't answer. Come on, Carl. Why did Mabel say the painting was done by her? said Dad. Answer us. The TV crew was silently putting away their equipment, but I could tell they were all listening. I stood up and ran upstairs. Mabel was in my room again. What did you do that for? You've ruined everything. Everything! I yelled at her. She frowned at me, then dived on the floor near my bed. Mum and Dad burst in. Carl, what's going on? said Mum, close to tears. Come on, son, you need to explain yourself, said Dad. Mabel appeared from beneath my bed with a painting of the chair with the wonky legs and tennis ball on the seat. My painting. The painting I had also titled Catch in My Head. Here's Cole's picture, said Mabel, tapping at it with her finger. She had a big smile on her face. She had no idea how bad this was going to be for me. That's Cole's, said Mum. Mabel nodded. Mabel has gone, she said sadly. Hammer went bang. She thumped her little fist on the floor just like the auctioneer's gravel. There was no question what she was telling us. Mum looked a bit sick as she sat down on the bed. Was there a mix-up, Cole? Did the wrong painting end up in the gallery, said Mum. Of course, said Dad, relief washing over her face. Declan must have taken the wrong one. When we got to the ocean, you were too embarrassed to say anything, isn't that right, Cole? I sat on my bed, my legs pulled up on my chin, resting on my knees, as I stared at the duvet. Mum crouched down beside me. This is very serious, darling, she said, putting her hand on my arm. If this is some kind of misunderstanding, then we really need to know so we can explain to everyone that it's just been a big mistake. My brain was buzzing. I needed more time to think, but they wanted an answer right now. Could I say that somehow the painting was take wrong painting was taken that day and I was too worried to say anything when I saw Mabel's picture on the wall, like Dad had suggested? I opened my mouth, but the words wouldn't come out. I simply couldn't lie anymore. There was no mix-up, I said firmly. I pretended Mabel's painting was mine. Nobody said anything. All you could hear were Mum and Dad's mobile phones vibrating on the kitchen counter downstairs. They sounded like giant wasps trapped in a jam jar. For a second, I wondered if I could just make a run for it, get away, go someplace where nobody knew me, but where would I go? Dad shuddered into life. Cole, is that the truth, that you deliberately gave Mabel's painting to Declan and pretended it was yours? And then, the words caught in his throat, and then it sold for £100,000? I nodded, not meeting his eyes. Mum whimpered and put her hand to her face. Do you understand? Do you actually understand what you've done? asked Dad. His eyes looked shimmery like he was about to cry. I'd never seen my dad cry before, and it was all because of me. I'm sorry, I whispered. You're sorry? he repeated, as if it was the most stupid thing I'd ever said to him. Cole, you've made a complete laughing stock of us in front of the whole bloody world! He shouted so loudly that I flinched and squeezed my eyes shut. Doug, calm down, said Mum. I opened my eyes again, but Mum just looked just as angry as Dad did. Downstairs, their mobile phones stopped ringing for a second and then started up again. Mabel was silent, looking up at me through her long lashes as she sat on the carpet with my painting. I couldn't do it, I said. I tried not to cry. I couldn't do the painting. I tried, Mum. I really did. Mum nodded as she listened. Dad paced around my room, wringing his hands together. I tried so many times. You can ask Mrs Frampton. I went to her classroom every chance I got, but everything I painted just looked awful and Marika didn't like them. 
I was hoping that they'd both start to look a bit sympathetic, but their faces hadn't changed. You should have told us you were struggling, said Dad. Why didn't you tell us? Mum shook her head at him. Go on, Cole, then what happened, she said. I was looking after Mabel when Dad went shopping and started playing with my planes. She squirted some on the canvas and mixed it around with her fingers. I looked at Mabel, who stared down at her hands. At first I told her off and said she was making a mess, but then I realised that her picture was far better than anything I'd done. I took a photo of it and sent it to Declan. I was expecting them to say it wasn't good enough, but they didn't. They loved it. I kind of laughed then, hoping they might see the funny side of it, but no one found it amusing. And didn't you feel the slightest bit guilty about what you were doing? said Dad. Yeah, but I had to give Marika something or she would have cancelled the auction and we wouldn't have made any money. And you and Mum were so excited, I just got carried away, I guess. When Declan came to collect it, I gave him Mabel's picture and pretended it was mine. I even signed it. I had no idea it would sell that for that much. Dad looked livid. So you're saying it would have been okay if it only sold for a thousand pounds? A hundred, he said. Yeah, I said. At least it would have made, wouldn't have made the news. Mum sighed. Cole, the painting was a lie regardless of how much it sold for. Can't you see the wrong in that? My throat felt tight as I tried not to cry. But the man was so rich he couldn't afford to buy a painting for a kid for £100,000. It's far more than we have and we need that money. Why does it matter? I saw a tear roll down Mum's face and she quickly brushed it away. Because we are better than that, Cole, she said. We have never put money before our integrity. I thought you of all people would understand that. I sat and blinked at them both. Now we know the truth. I guess we'll have to go and face everyone. We'll call Marika's office and confirm that the painting isn't yours so they can cancel the sale, said Dad. I swung my legs around the side of the bed. Cancel the sale? But, but, but the bidder, bidder might still want to buy it. It's a good picture. Art is art. That's what Marika says. Anyone can make it. How can they just give in like that? Dad rolled his eyes. Don't you get it, Cole? He said. This isn't us. This family does not tell lies. This family does not put money before our moral values. I glanced at Mum. She looked utterly devastated. She took Mabel's hand and they both left the room. What a mess you've got us into, son, Dad said, shaking his head as he followed. After he'd gone, I took a few deep breaths, and then I kicked off my expensive trainers and stuffed them back in their box, throwing them into the corner of my room. I dived on my bed and lay face down on my pillow. It was all over. My secret was out, and I'd ruined absolutely everything. I felt a sob building in the back of my throat, but the tears wouldn't come. I'd never seen Mum and Dad look at me before like that. They were so ashamed. I wanted to turn back time to that morning when I took the photograph of Mabel's painting lying on my floor. If only I hadn't pushed hers under my bed and take a picture of mine instead. Even if Marika reject rejected it and my art career was over before it had even begun, at least I wouldn't have been caught lying to the entire world. I gulped and let go of the sob, and my shoulders began to shake as I cried. Before long, my pillow was soaked with tears. Oh, a bit of a sad bit. Um, we've not got far left. Maybe we'll hear a little bit more about an enigma in oil. So have a lovely half turn next week um, and we will finish the book when we get back. It shouldn't take us probably in the, in the first week back. We'll finish it. I'm excited to find out what happens. Um, have a lovely half turn and I will see you soon.